I'm back. <laughs> What's going on, Search Trackers? Welcome to another episode of the Search Cast, Season 2, Episode 9, powered by Belly Up Sports and our amazing sponsors of Primal X Hockey, Level Up Snacks, and In the Clutch Apparel. I'm Zach Martin. I'm Bailey Curtis. And oh, baby, it's good to be back. <laughs> Missed him last week, how to move, but here we are, Episode 33. Ooh. Just, you were dearly right. missed. You were dearly oh, missed. Oh, well, you know, I mean, thanks. I'll, I'll slip you your $20 later, but. <laughs> <laughs> All from but, the heart, bud. <laughs> no, I appreciate that. But no, it's it's definitely good to be back for sure. It's It was weird, like, last week. I'm, like, sitting here going, like, I don't know what to do with my hands. Because it's just, like, I'm so used to doing it. Like, 31 straight episodes, just knocking mm-hmm. these out. Then it's, like. All right, you're taking a week off. It's like what? a week vacation. It's like I I, it, I don't need a vacation. <laughs> yeah, it's like wait, what? It's like it's 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 weird. Like first episode, just not on the podcast, and it's like mm-hmm. what, what? <laughs> but honestly, though, Bailey, fantastic job with Ladies Night. Just such a great episode. It just so we, proud. So we proud. had a we had a lot of fun honestly and yeah. it like it, it was one of those things i honestly i love all of those girls say i mean obviously i mean we've had sam and kat on the pod here before but oh, yeah. meeting jules and get to hear and getting to hear all of her stories was it, it was it was fantastic i i had a blast and even my dad texted me uh earlier today and i he was like yeah great episode by the way like you guys had great chemistry like it, it felt like it, and somebody else i think it was the guys from uh home ice advantage had sent oh, me a yeah, message yeah. while i was running the podcast and they were like yeah i was a little startled when i saw that it was two hours but honestly <laughs> it went by like that just because of the environment you guys created on the episode so it, it was great i had a lot of fun yeah um, Spencer yeah. coming at you and saying it needs to happen more often was hilarious. Yeah, yeah. Thanks, Spencer. I appreciate it. Yeah, a friend of ours. <laughs> Spencer, who's technically his second team is the Kings, but he's an ass fan, but he's like, you need to give Zach more of a break. And I'm like, ah, oh, excuse me, <laughs> You sir. trying to say something, bud? <laughs> yeah, like, hello. Like, tell, tell him the guy who created the podcast and kicked rocks for a few episodes. All right, cool, I guess. But, bye. So, but no, honestly, though, I mean, we have had two hour episodes before. We've had mm-hmm. a lot of hour and a half. So it's like, it's nothing really new mm-hmm. for a long episode. I can't remember. But... I, I want to say the last two hour episode was our Kane's draft. If I'm not yeah. mistaken. Yeah, yeah it, was so... our, it was our Kane's draft. And then, and then before was... that, it was the episode <laughs> I think we had Joel on. Wade no? Mentor. Wade was Mentor Wade... was. Oh, that's right. Yeah. yeah. Mentor, Mentor was two hours and then Joel was two hours. And then okay. your first ever episode ever, mm-hmm. not just as the host, ever but as ever, a guest, as the guest was two hours. Yeah. So yeah, somehow getting you on the podcast, it's like our podcast episodes have gone from like an hour tops. I'm so to like sorry. <laughs> no, it's fine. Because honestly, it's actually because it was only an hour because it's like, okay, I have a guest. It's kind of about it. Or it's me by myself. Right. And even then, I'm like, I kind of want you to do 30 minutes because doing an hour is kind of yeah. brutal. Especially when you're writing solo, it's like, what, yeah. it, like I can talk about this, but like it's, I, I feel like it also creates a, a nice like environment of the pod when you have like you're not just talking at a screen by yourself, you know? Yeah, it's where you're just looking at yourself or just kind of like looking at a timer mm-hmm. as you're talking, and it's just like, what? Yeah, it's it feels kind of off, but honestly though, I'm fine with our hour and a half podcast because it's actually fun because we. It seems like a lot of people like it, you know, yeah. that, you know, different discussions, the tangents and we talk about a lot of things that it's kind of like, you know, what would you, would you have done it by yourself or would you have gotten a guest? So it's mm-hmm. kind of like that chemistry thing kind of works out perfectly. Yeah. So honestly, it's, it's, it's just, it's, it's so perfect, but no, the did a fantastic job last week. The socials Thank were really you. good. The episode was really good. It seems like a lot of people liked it. So it's mm-hmm. definitely that was a lot of fun, but definitely, definitely weird for the first time having to like edit the podcast. And all I hear yeah. in the beginning is, yeah, the only time you hear Zach is when he does, the, mm-hmm. when he does the ad reads. And I'm like, wow. That's, that's <laughs> it's crazy to think about when you're not the one it, like listening to yourself going into like, Hey, here is an ad read, whatever. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Exactly. But no, I thought you did a phenomenal job. The start was really good. You know, Thank the you. discussions were really good as well. And just, just 
you did me so proud. The the, the beginning you. was perfect. So no, it you know was... it it was so weird too because I like as outgoing and personable as I am, like I still have, a, I get a lot of moments of like stage fright and I'm sure oh, yeah. you could hear like in the beginning of the episode, <laughs> like it didn't quite sound like me. Like I yeah. had like my announcer, like new person voice on. And it was like, it, like once we kind of started getting more into the episode, I feel like I kind of loosened up a little bit, but I felt yeah. super tense, like opening it up. It was like, Oh no, I don't know what to do. I don't want to mess it up. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's definitely an experience going from like being like the, co-host spot mm -hmm. to be like all right here's the host spot have fun and go <laughs> run with it and you're just like all right what kind of intro should i do like how like i literally had show? it written down on it and people <laughs> people on the youtube version will be able to see me kind of like looking down making sure like i'm saying everything correctly but i literally right. had like intro say this powered by <laughs> our sponsors whatever outro right, whatever yeah, yeah. like just to make sure like i wasn't messing anything up because i was like i'm not gonna do this podcast wrong my first time hosting it ever <laughs> so <laughs> i refuse it's it's like i gotta make it sound legit for my first mm -hmm. episode of the solo host but no i honestly Super good. I'm so proud of you. It was just Thank fantastic. You. So, but. but we do have a lot of cool stuff for us today. Um, for those who did listen to the last week's episode, we are going to kind of backtrack to a couple topics because since I wasn't here, because mm -hmm. of course we've just been flying by the seat of our <laughs> pants for the last like three episodes before last week, trying to make content. The mm -hmm. week I leave, and Bailey just had to bring this up to me. <laughs> the week Zach is gone, Stassi gets signed. Jersey announcement happens, and I'm like, of course. Which I will say, with the jerseys, <laughs> it wasn't, like, officially announced by the Canes until, right. like, after I had sent you that message or after we had recorded. Like, it right. was kind of almost confirmed rumors at yeah, that point. It, it was it was the worst-kept secret around hockey at right, the time. Yeah. Like, you knew it was going to happen. Mm -hmm. But it's just like, of course. The Hurricanes jersey announcement happens. Paul Stassi gets signed, and it's like, mm -hmm. and I'm sitting going, I got to wait another week to come out of the podcast. Like, come on, man. So, so getting into that, what do you like? What do you think about Paul Stastny? What's what's honestly, going around your brain there? Honestly, I think it's a really good signing. You know, one year, 1.3 uh, veteran presence, a good veteran mm -hmm. presence on the team. You know, been in Winnipeg for a couple stints, started off in Colorado. I mean, yeah. honestly, it is a really solid pickup. And I kind of, I think I kind of had a feeling too of the fact when you get, patch ready kind of out and you're like trying to figure out how you want to do your roster up and i think the hurricanes probably have been fine with some of the new younger guys coming up i think they're like we're going for it this year mm -hmm. it seems like they're it seems like right now the hurricanes are like pushing for it mm -hmm. that's why they went after patch ready that's why they went after burns so i think it's like they trust noison but i think they wanted to put a little bit more of a push in terms of like let's bring another guy in who can score who's got the veteran yeah. presence, who's been there and done that, and let's get him in there. And I think getting Stastny for what they did is a perfect amount. Because yeah. the cap the cap is going to work itself out. They're going to figure out Jay Gardner's contract. Mm -hmm. And they're going to figure out, you know, when Patrick Reddy comes back, how they're going to figure out the cap. Which it's probably going to be someone's getting sent down, or there's going to be a possible trade open of the cap space. That however, was however that's going to work. That was what's kind of like messing me up too is the fact that how far are we over the cap now? A few million after this signing. Uh, going and over to going over to cap friendly because it's your <laughs> here's our friend. daily cap friendly plug. <laughs> hey, cap friendly. If you, if, you, if you guys want to uh, sponsor us, we'd really appreciate that. <laughs> Uh, right now we are sitting at minus two point six one six million dollars. Okay, so that's not as bad as I was thinking it was, but still, it, it kind of posed the question too. I mean, how are we going to get back at least at the cap or over the cap by the time the beginning of the season starts with this? Because something you also got to think about too is Patrick injured, but he should be like we're not going to Kudra of him. Like it, it's it. Like, yeah, he, we're, yeah he's not going to just sit on LTIR until playoffs happen. He's going to come back. And at some point we are going to absorb that cap hit. How is that going to work? Yeah. Right. Cause right now injury reserve wise, cause Jay Gardner still technically on the IR list. Mm -hmm. We have $11 million on the injury reserve between yeah. patches and Jay Garner. And the fact that, so Paul says he did was a 1.3, but since he is the 35 plus no trade clause term, 
mm-hmm. he technically is 1.5. So while they say it's 1.3, it's technically 1.5 because of that uh, 35 plus no trade clause contract that he has. Yeah. So my guess is probably Lane Pearson's probably going to have to go down and they're going to have to figure out because we got one, two, three, four, five, six. Yes, yeah, so we have seven guys on defense. I would say probably you're going to look at maybe Jalen Chaffield going down. We're going to run with like six D men. Which yeah. is going to be an interesting change, too, because you saw last season, like we had scratches for days, but those yeah. scratches also weren't getting paid the big bucks. Mm. So we had the ability to kind of keep them up with us. Yeah, it's there's definitely going to be some cap finagling with the Hurricanes this year, because especially the fact that like Chaffield and Peterson, that's 762 and a half for Jalen Chaffield, and then uh, Peterson's got 750,000. So even then taking those two off, you're only looking at like 1.5-ish, 1. Yeah. 1.6. So you're still about a million short. So, yeah, they're still going to have to figure out how to finagle cap, especially you know since the fact that we have four guys under a million dollars on the entire roster. Everyone else is at least 1.5 or more. And you know what's interesting, too, is – and you probably heard this when I brought it up during the last podcast, but for Daily Faceoff, Daily Faceoff actually has Lane Peterson on the right wing, fourth line, which I think is very interesting. It's very interesting, but I think they're kind of just throwing darts at the wall right now because they don't know what the yeah. roster is going to look like. And I don't see – even then, I never really saw him doing that. I would see like Noah's in at that. I would yeah. see him maybe more than anything yeah. else. But now with the Stassi signing, now you're really t- you know what? I'm gonna go do it. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go to the to the lines and see if they kind of updated it because with getting Stassi. Oh mm-hmm. no! It's, it's no. They did. Better. They did update with Stassi. Oh, did they uh, on daily faceoff? Or I literally mm, just had it pulled up. Hold up. No, they got Liam Pearson back on there. No, I know, but Please. let's see. Yeah, they have Paul Stastny 2C, which puts KK oh, I down the 4C. Yeah, see, I, and that's going to be my thing, too, is like we're all somewhat, if not all, convinced that KK is going to be filling that 2C role. But now with Paul Stastny in there, and I mean, I, I, I've i said it from the get-go. I personally don't like using daily face-off. I don't always agree with the lines that they kind of place and put up. Yeah, no, um, I don't I... but. Because I th- well, actually, you know what? I think Cap Friendly has a thing where you could get the lines. I have to go check. Um, I know you can craft them in GM mode, but I don't know. Uh, okay. Yeah, because it's definitely it's definitely be interesting to see how they're gonna, how they're going to play that out with um oh depth charts. Let's see if let's see if that does anything. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Here we go. Yeah. So. Okay, so they have Svech, Aho, Jarvis, first line. Tara, Vina, Kakaniemi, Nietzsche, second line. Ooh. Mm-mm. Already don't like it. Hold on. here. Well, th- yeah, I don't. T- you don't break up Tavo and Aho. Th- th- plus, Tavo's not a left. Tavo can play left wing, but he's mainly a it's right not wing. his natural position. Yeah. Here's the third line, though. Statsny, Stahl, and Faust. I would not be upset with that. Third I don't line. mind that because does Stasny play left wing? Yeah, he's a left. He's mainly left wing center. Center is his second position. He's mainly uh, a left winger. Okay. And then I, your, I can get down with that actually. Here's your here's your fourth line: Martinuk, Drury, and Kasha. I am totally okay with that. Aside from the the breaking up Terry Vinen and Aho, I am totally okay with that third and fourth line. Yeah. Well, because yeah, because. You would have to, yeah, because if you leave Jarvis with Aho, you would have to put Tavo on the left wing because Tavo can play both sides, but Seth is just a natural right winger. Mm-hmm. And with Nietzsche, he's right wing center, and that's it. Mm-hmm. So you would have to figure out how to do the right wing spot with Tavo and Jarvis. Mm-hmm. Because, yeah, because Martin Nietzsche doesn't play left wing. Yeah, so I would say you would have to swap Tavo and uh Svetch. Mm-hmm. If you're gonna but then Tavo has to play left wing. Mm-hmm. Um yeah. But honestly though, I mean I don't mind it. Stastny with Stahl and Foss, and then you got Martinuk, Drury, Kasha as your fourth line. 
And so just kind of getting back to and it, like it, it's interesting that they put Stastny on a line with Stahl and Faust because just I, I've got his stats pulled up here. And so kind of looking at his best season, his best season arguably was his first with and it like his first ever season when he played with Colorado. Yeah. Uh, 28 goals, uh, 50 assists. Um, it's kind of trickled down since then, and he hasn't been near it. I mean, it last season was beautiful with Winnipeg 21 goals, 24 assists. That's not bad at all. No, it's not, but it kind of poses the question too. So is like, we, while that is our main shutdown line, we rely very heavily on our third. Every Canes fan knows this. Yeah. Um, what kind of roles are Stastny, Stahl and Foss going to play with each other? Because there's that big role with Nieder, Niederreiter being our main goal scorer on that line. Yeah. Is Stastny going to fill that role? Is Faust going to have to step up? Does Jordo have to come up and do some things and build up his goal scoring game a little bit? Or do, yeah. do we kind of just continue? Because he, of course, he's captain. He knows how to play defense as an off or like as a forward. Yeah. Yeah. Like anybody will tell you, he is one of the first back and back checking. Yeah. Um, so it's one of those things, dude. Like with that role kind of established, where do Stastny and Faust fall in? So. I would say, uh, yeah, I would say most likely because I mean, Stassi can score. I think if mm -hmm. he's got a good set guy, like, like if Stolen Foss can continue what they did last year and just plug in Stassi in that spot, mm -hmm. I think you can see what Stassi did, like what Nino Niederreiter did. I think you're gonna, if we even get like half of what Nino did with Stassi, mm -hmm. I think that you're kind of already got a plus on that because I mean, Stassi is in his like upper third mid upper 30s yeah like i don't expect this guy to light the world on fire but it's like mm -hmm. but you get like that production that jordan that stall and Faust had with nino and you get half of that with, St with stastny i really want to be upset with that and, and just think about it too this is a guy that's scoring 21 goals 24 assists with winnipeg yeah and that's like so, what that's maybe second line minutes with them, but yeah, even then, imagine like, what that translates to on a Canes team like us, or like like it yeah. is right now. Yeah, exactly. So, so yeah, I think getting Stastny is a I think is a huge pickup for the Canes, especially because they kind of need more of a veteran push, mm -hmm. especially with for losing matches season. for a while. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And now the cap space situation is going to be fun because you got to drop two point six million off the cap. Mm -hmm. and you got to figure out what you're going to do with Gardner and mm -hmm. you got to figure out what you're going to do with patches when it comes March time. And it's like, all right, how are we going to get some uh, room here yeah. when he comes back? So I don't, <laughs> Don Waddell is going to be pulling some rabbits out of his, out of his hats to yeah. even try He's to gonna like, need to. Yeah, exactly. Cap, cap finagling. How are we going to work this out? So yeah. it's, well, uh, I mean, he hasn't disappointed me yet this season. So, or this off season. So no, I think pretty much like the draft, I mean, the draft he did well on everything you know. he's done this uh, off season has been a dub in yeah. my, in my eyes. I know a lot of people are kind of are sad that Stevie Lawrence left, which it kind of stinks, but I mean, I mean, but at the same time too, you got to think about what that does for his career. So it, does. it, it gives him more of a plush in a team that kind of needs more of a plush and it gives mm -hmm. him more chances to get, gives him an opportunity to step up more than he might've been able to with the Canes. So yeah, that's plus we got. Yeah, plus we got Brent Burns. So I mean, yeah, I mean, you know, dude, him, oh, him and Slav on that first D pair is going to be absolutely just so good. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm, I, I, it, or I remember there was a post that I think it was NHL Network posted about who's going to score the most points as a defenseman this season for, for their new Brent team. Burns, uh, Tony D'Angelo. Oh, 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 I probably put TA there. I mean, that's yeah. cute. That's cute. I'm trying to, I, I've got to go and find it now because my dad replied to it and I was having a conversation with him about it. Uh, oh, here it goes. So, uh, yeah, they put it was Burns, Tony D'Angelo, uh, Klingberg, and Weger. Um, and I, I mean, just with our proclivity for allowing those defensemen to break records, because with Dougie Hamilton here, he broke a record. Yep with points and goals while he was with us, Tony D'Angelo, same, same, same thing. So uh, it's, it's just a matter yeah. of, yeah, yeah. It, it's just a matter of, like I, I, you give me an opportunity to put money down on, on any of those guys and it's Burns every day. Oh yeah. I, and I basically, I quote tweeted it and just put Burns Jersey number as the post. I'm like this guy right here. 
mm-hmm. because it's gonna come on. You you get one of the best offensive defensemen in mm-hmm. in, in his time mm-hmm. and still can do it, and then you're gonna put it on a Hurricanes team where he's gonna quarterback a power play unit. Mm-hmm. And his D pair man is Jacob Slavin, who is just an assist machine. God tier. Yeah. <laughs> and then and, and then you're talking about Tim Gleason as your defense coach. Mm-hmm. And Rod Brandenmore is your is your actual coach. Like, I mean, you know. Yeah. I mean, come on. Tell me how Brent Burns does not just, just have a, a god amount of numbers this year and just like make it look stupid. Yeah, I, I I like and everybody who's listened to the podcast and listened to the off season one where we talked about the Brent Burns pickup will know that I was not a biggest fan of the trade just because of his age and the age he's gonna yeah. be by the time he's oh, done with I, us. I I loved it. I loved that trade. Yeah, I'm like let's go. And by it like by now, I mean I've had some time to look at a, a few highlights, a few just kind of yeah. reels of him playing the game, and it's I I got increasingly more excited after see, seeing all of that right that's the, i wish more hockey fans would have that take of like not immediately having an opinion but actually like looking watching mm-hmm. understanding mm-hmm. because once you do like once you get like a little bit more into watching the, like don't look at the box score is good to look at mm-hmm. but you also got to watch the on ice product too because and that's where it, I think a lot of people them. that's where I think a lot of people sleep on Jacob Slavin too is just because of that box score and they're not actually just because he is not as highly repped as a lot of other defensemen in the league like people oh, don't oh. have an opportunity to see him play. Yeah, oh no, believe me. We're going to talk about Jacob Slavin here in a little bit. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I have some thoughts. Um just a few. <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 yeah, the, someone actually left me a comment on Twitter. I had a laugh at it, but I'll I'll save it for when we actually talk about it because because you know me and everyone who does know me who follows my account. Mm-hmm. This comment you're gonna be like, did you read his bio? Do you know what he talks about? So it's gonna be yeah. But so lovely uh, stats, need fantastic signing. Excited for that. Cap space is gonna be fun. So the <laughs> other bit of news, which is the worst kept secret in hockey at the time. Uh, the Hurricanes are making now their alternates the new primaries. So now we have the black jerseys as our new home primaries. Because I, mm-hmm. I think Mike Foreman even said it. He's like, from debuting them like five years ago, which is still crazy. I think it's been five years already. Yeah. To now they're the primary jerseys because they everyone wants to see the black jerseys more. Which I agree, they are pretty nice. It's mm-hmm. still a little bit weird that we're not going to have a red home jersey. Mm-hmm. Because because the the darks didn't become the homes until like oh five oh six. So that was the first time you had the dark jerseys as the homes. Yeah. So even for the first one from like ninety nine to oh three, because I think because oh four no oh four because oh four oh five they got canceled. You still had the white jerseys for a good number of years before they went to the reds, and then it's been the reds for ever forever yeah. yeah so now it's it's gonna be weird having the blacks i mean the, i mean the alternate jerseys are so nice oh they're i love them so they're so clean and i was yeah. telling jules because she brought out her old like old old alternate the one where you still yeah have the, the, one the, flag. The, the, i i still got my i still got my brain my my brand and sutter signed one of course oh, everyone yeah. knows it. Everyone, everyone's heard the story yeah, I want to the story. But I mean, love, come on. The, love Brandon Sutter. No, I but need, she. You know, I, I, I need to hang both jerseys next to each other and be like, ah, ah, like these. <laughs> <laughs> but the thing is, it, like, she pulled it out, and those had still had the gray and black flag stripe or at yep, the bottom. Yeah, and I oh, think the it, I, flags also. Oh, yeah, at the it, like the flag lining on the bottom, and I think that is the one thing that these blacks are missing. But still, like it's still super yeah. streamlined, super clean. Yeah. Like you can't go wrong with that. No, kind of uniform as a whole. Honestly, I still kind of miss like the 0506 mm-hmm. jerseys where they actually had the patches on the bottom of the course, or the ones where it's got like the ring, like the the uh, the shoulder stripes going, mm-hmm. around, going yep. around the top. Yep, those ones are still kind of because they still had the warning stripes at the bottom. I kind of miss that on the reds, but. Mm-hmm. I mean, and the thing is, too, like, I mean, I know why they changed it. I know kind of what their thought process was. And we talked about this last week, too, was where that one warning flag that is a tropical, like, 
storm warning. Like it's yeah. not a hurricane warning, whereas yeah, the two flags it's, it's, are. It's, it's, so it's been yeah, it's a tropical yeah, it's like a tropical warning. Yeah, it's a warning or a depression or something. Yeah, or watch one of the things. But yeah, no, it's but no, and the the double flag is fantastic. I'm, the little I'm, North Carolina symbol in between the flags is so it's, seamlessly it's, done. It's so it's so, it's, it's a nice subtle touch. It's so mm-hmm. great. But I'm. I'm curious to see who the alternate, what the alternates are going to be, because I'm thinking it's probably going to be the 25th anniversary for this year, or they're just going to make it a new alternate in general, and then we're just going to have like three new jerseys this year. I mean, you also got to remember too the reverse retros 2.0 that's what, yeah, are making a comeback. So that, that's what I'm saying. So we have a possible new alternate, the reverse retro, and the stadium series. We're probably looking at three jerseys this year for the Hurricanes, if not more. Like, yeah, so. depending on what they do. With it's weird, like they do, they like make similar or they make like subtle changes to each of their theme night jerseys every year. So yeah. we get to look. Oh, yeah, those, yeah, but... yeah, yeah. For the yeah for the practice jerseys, yeah. But yeah. I mean, but if you're talking like like oh like actual game jerseys, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah like so, are we talking like an alternate, or are we talking a 25th anniversary edition, or are we talk? So yeah, four jerseys. You're talking 25th anniversary, new alternates reverse retros and stadium series mm-hmm. or there's gonna be the 25th anniversary of the new alternate for this year and they just make another one the season after yeah. so on it four three or four new jerseys this year <laughs> christmas and my birthday are gonna be are, are gonna i be know very expensive. <laughs> it's gonna be very start nice. saving money i know it's like, it's like you get two jerseys this year i gotta buy the other two yeah it's just Whatever. a matter of two i'm me as a college student buying all these jerseys is not going to be fun i still have to get my alternate which yeah. i'm waiting one for money to actually do it and two like i mean they haven't restocked my size in forever i don't know when they might have done it last i've also got to wait for carolina pro shops maintenance to be done so i can actually get my jersey through there but yeah it's just i don't know i i, I need to get that jersey uh the stadium series i absolutely need to get that and i'm hoping it doesn't break my bank because i'm already going to be breaking bank my bank on uh, an actual game ticket which right. flight is secured i'm officially out there for the 18th <laughs> and i'm so excited nice let's go um yeah jerseys i at this point, if for the alternate, I say just kind of wait and see what happens at this mm-hmm. point because it's like, who knows what's going to happen? Like, mm-hmm. whenever the store does open up or anything else, I mean, at this point, I say it's a it's a waiting game. I say just yeah. wait and figure it out. Or, I mean, I also uh, have to get my Avalanche jersey too because of the bet that I lost. So, got to think about that as well. Lost when the Avs <laughs> are your second team. Yeah, okay. I mean, I lost. I, I've. I'm planning on getting. I was planning on getting one anyway. It was just a matter of when and who. So and who? Yeah. Honestly, so. though, the guy you do you are getting a Devin Tays, not a bad pick. No, not at I, all. Which... Devin, De, I, I mean, I love Devin Tays. Yeah. I, I I think it's a solid pick. Mm-hmm. But um, but go back to the jerseys real quick. Yeah. Fantastic. Love it. The black jerseys are gonna be great. The homes. The whites are just chef's kiss. They're just fantastic too. You know, what was really interesting to me, too, is the fact that so many people were getting so up in arms about that announcement. Everyone knew it was going to happen. I don't know why people are getting upset about it. Because Barstool posted something was like, Kaniacs aren't going to be happy about this one. And I was like, um, what? So it's it's, it's Barstool. No, but the thing is, like, that was just one of the many that I saw like people complaining about the fact that what happened to the reds? I like the reds. You guys, it, we've also talked nonstop about how much we love the black jerseys guys. Remember new alternates, 25th anniversary edition jerseys, possibly coming out this year, reverse retros yep. stadium series. There's yeah. going to be a red Jersey. It's just not going to be the primary Jersey. It's going to mm-hmm. be okay. We're going to have the red. You're still going to look super cool donning your original red jersey to games. Like, it's... It's okay. It really is. It's okay. Like, I mean, I wish I could I wish I could wear my original red jersey because it's a CCM, but it's like from like 07, 08. No, 06, 07. So it's still a little bit old. So it's You can be a still wear cool. it, though. That's the beauty of the jerseys. You can wear whatever the heck you want. It's fine. Um, well, all, so. you're also talking high school me to now, so there's a oh. little bit of a difference. So, yeah. 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 Now, oh, if, well. I, if I can go online and find, like, a Rod Brendamore from that age or, like, a Cam yes, Ward jersey from, the, from that time period, sure. I would yes, easily please. love to get that. But, I mean, 
Heck, I don't even get a Rod. I don't even get a Cam Ward in this current red edition just because it's Cam Ward. Because mm-hmm. it's it's Cam freaking Ward. Mm-hmm. Hey, no, I, I'm not, still I'm still looking around for um the the OG all, Cam it, Wards. Like, yeah, I'm the, looking the OG, the OG. My eye on eBay on wherever necessary. I want to get one of those. It's gonna movies. it's gonna be very hard to get an OG Cam Ward jersey. It's gonna be so it's tough. It's gonna happen someday. Someday. So you guys have any plugs? Hit me up. <laughs> so, all right, so Bailey's white whale jersey is an O is an O five O six Cam Ward jersey. If you're willing to give that up, which is going to be very tough if you're a Hurricanes fan, do you have someone who's interested? <laughs> but remember, she's college. She's a college kid, so don't kill her too much on the please, price, please. Yeah, which it's it's Bailey. How why would you do it to Bailey? Why would you do please. that to Bailey? No, but <laughs> kind of getting back to O five O six. Somebody finally watched the game for the first time. Wait, it's still my, it's still week. like you know the games on you know it's on Twitter or not on Twitter you know it's on YouTube right like I had never found it before so huh. I it, I don't know I had looked for it before but I don't know of, I just well got... of, well of course as someone who has the DVD that has the game on it as the special features. <laughs> I just thought it, I thought it was so funny too. I texted my dad. It was like, I'm watching this for the first time. I feel like a kid on Christmas. I don't know what I'm going to do. Like, I'm so excited. I'm bouncing up and down. My dad was like, I've already watched it three times. Have fun. It's like, okay, thanks dad. (laughs) And then I texted the group chat that I'm in with all those uh, guys from uh, that we used to hang out with back in North Carolina, all of his friends and my friend or Dave texted back and he was like, yeah, I have permanent like hearing damage from that game i was like i'm not surprised just listening to it on the tv and how it like hearing how loud it was yeah yeah everyone's heard the story on this podcast i don't know how many times now but yeah stood the entire game only time we sat was intermissions Mm -hmm. yeah Yeah. like i will for like whenever the questions ask what's the best game you've ever seen or what's your most favorite sports memory or like just anything like that one favorite of sports no matter how it's rewarded being at Game Seven in 06 to see the Canes win the Cup. Yep. For like I've been to, I've been to Daytona 500. I've been to the 50th 500 mm-hmm. at Daytona. Mm-hmm. I've been to Super Bowls. Like I've seen the yeah. Hawks win cups. But I mean, <laughs> nothing. Nothing's gonna beat the Canes winning it in 06 because mm-hmm. it's me. My, it's me. And my dad. We're just absolutely losing our minds after Jay witnessing some of the greatest moments in Jay, oh, our dude. past. Justin, like I, Justin Williamson, that empty netter, him just jumping like at least like a good eight feet off mm-hmm. the ice. Like we were, we were losing it. Like, yeah, that, I mean, I I had seen replays and like highlights of that Pisani save, the chicken wing. Oh, that uh, I love, Cam Ward gosh. save. But seeing it, quote unquote, live. Oh my gosh, was dude, is mind blowing. I just can't believe I was actually seeing in the corner, on that side of the ice where he does the save. Mm-hmm. Like I can, I can vividly re- like, I can like right now talk about. I can, I'm imagining it, and I can actually see like I'm actually still there. Yeah. Of just him throwing his leg out, and just stoning Pisani. Right. It's just yeah. like, oh my gosh, robbed him. And well, if I had I, to put money on it, that won us the game. Oh, it did so, for yeah. sure. <laughs> but that the, secured but then, it for us. Oh yeah, but then you get the Justin Williams empty netter. He jumps. He jumps eight feet off the ice. The ability. Yeah. The building absolutely. You thought the roof was gonna call, like just blow mm-hmm. off the place because it got like someone held a des like the the decimal meter up. It was like a hundred and six or hundred and nine. That place was I believe loud. It. Yeah. Oh, it was so loud. Like my ears are ring- my ears are ringing like three days later. Still, that's like how loud that's that nuts. that building was. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Crazy. Like game seven and 06 will forever be my favorite sports moment mm-hmm. ever in my lifetime. Yeah. Like I said, I've seen cups won. I've mm-hmm. seen you know it's. The when the hurricanes do it again, um, I can't wait to see it as an adult. I guess a kid is a lot great. of fun. As a kid, it's so great because hey, your favorite team just won a cup. But as mm-hmm. an adult, though, oh, uh, crying beautiful. Yeah, <laughs> I, I, I will be crying, and it's gonna I, make I'll, me I'll sad right too. <laughs> it's gonna make me sad too if I can't get out there for at least one, uh, like no, on yeah. the fence game. Yeah, um, oh yeah, to if potentially if win it. Yeah, the Hurricanes have like Game Four at home. Yeah, or like if I if six. I can't make it to get your round like Stanley Cup Final Game Four, Five, Six, Seven, whatever. Yeah, like I I'm going to be livid because yeah. I I would kill to witness that. 
Yeah, see, like seeing it on TV is nice, but seeing it actually live, mm-hmm. and then you see Ryan Brennamore do his like little stomps, mm-hmm. and then just. Uh, I ha- I took a video of the celebration, like the post game, uh, whatever that or Rod hoisting the cup. I have the video on my phone from when I was watching it last week, and yes, I'm. One of the best celebrations, the fact that he completely just like just. <laughs> you could tell on his face, Gary Bettman's getting ready to present it, and you can tell on his face he was like, "Just hurry up! I want to pick this thing up already." Oh, and then, <laughs> like then he's bouncing Gary, up and down. And you see Gary Bettman's face afterwards, and he's just like, "Oh!" oh he tries to grab it to at least try to hand it to him a little bit. <laughs> yeah, Rod's like, like, "Nope." Cool. It's Rod's first cup. They've been mm-hmm. working their butts off since he joined the team, and it's like he was there for O two mm-hmm. against the Wings. So I mean. <laughs> Which is so crazy to think that the Red Wings were the Western Conference champs in 2002. So, yeah, <laughs> definitely where you yeah. see Red Wings canes, and you're like, wait, what? Yeah, the Red Wings <laughs> used to be a Western Conference hockey team back in yeah. the day. The funny just, thing, too, the Canes adding Edmonton being like, like they had a picture of the schedule on NHL oh, Network. They were like, man, Edmonton, was, you want to watch it together? <laughs> that was, and I, and I actually posted a gif of uh, Dave Chappelle when he was a. Uh, oh, I think Prince or Little Richie. He goes, "That's cold blooded." Because mm-hmm. it was. That was so. That was so <laughs> cool. And so Edmonton's petty, like, "It's so great." <laughs> yeah, and Edmonton's like, "No." Like I think I think every time yeah. that game has been on TV, the Hurricanes immediately tag Edmonton, and it's just like, it's just a running joke with Carolina. Like mm-hmm. they always just gotta remind Edmonton, hey. I mean, we're well, so I'm close. Gonna... We 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 deserve to talk about it, recreating that moment just a little bit. <sighs> Yeah, no, so I'm I'm, ex- I'm excited for the next one. Hopefully this year, but it's gonna be yeah. next year. I'm manifesting it now, so it's yeah, gonna happen. <laughs> yeah, but no, 06 though, it's just great. Memories. Nothing like so, it. That, no, it's like I said, love this team. It's just uh, being a Hurricanes fan, is so much fun. It's, so <laughs> it's like the, a the roller dark, coaster that never ends. It is, but. <laughs> It's the song that never ends. <laughs> but no, no, it's I'm I'm ready for I'm just so ready for hockey season to be mm-hmm. here. Like they posted a photo of the uh NC State's football stadium, yes. Carter Finley, and it's like two eight twenty three, and I'm like, I'm so ready. Can it be I'm February like, already? For the fact as as an NC State fan and, and a Hurricanes fan, it's gonna be like in that football stadium, which funny enough. First time ever going to be in that football stadium. It's for mm-hmm. a hockey game. Yeah. Not a Wolfpack game, but mm-hmm. it's for a hockey game. I, I am... mean, it's, I've never been in it either. And I, it, like, I mean, I used to live, what, 30 ish minutes from it. So, oh, yes. Yeah, I mean, yeah. this is coming from a UNC fan, though. So, yeah. Well, I mean, I, I used to live in Cary. Oh, well, Cary before it became New York infested, but then also, <laughs> a, also Apex. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. I mean, but. I do plan on going to an NCC football game at some point soon. It's just, it's crazy. My first game actually at that stadium is going to be mm-hmm. hockey, not football. But I mean, yeah. the tailgating though is going to be absolutely insane. It's going to be, be stupid. Great. It's going to be, be great. Be, I'm, I'm, I'm ready for it. It's I'm just, so ready to get together with everybody. It's going to be such a fun time. I, oh gosh. And it's I'm, so exciting too. Cause my best friend who I'm staying with while I go out there, while I'm out in North Carolina, she lives uh, like an eight minute drive. Oh, from the arena so it'd be what maybe like an hour long walk maybe less than that if you um, want to do I, that yeah yeah if i wanted to which would be a nice little walk i mean yeah given potentially if it's gonna I, we don't know what the weather's gonna look like yet at all yeah. but it's like a mixed bag just being north carolina <laughs> but <laughs> <laughs> luckily my, my dad doesn't drink at all so he's like the automatic dd i'm telling my dad that day of the game like dad you're driving <laughs> I am gonna. I am gonna. I'm I gonna need to try party. Storm Brew. I haven't tried it yet. I need to try it. I mean, that's. I mean, I have to drive to North Carolina just to get it myself. Yeah. So, I mean, because we don't do that. We don't get it down here. It's, mm-hmm. it's kind of sad, honestly. Yeah. Yeah. Really how about Appalachian? How about Appalachian State now has their own beer? And it's designed the same, and huh. it's like. Yeah, I didn't even see that. That's interesting. It's it was. I think Cat shared it in the group chat, but then it's like. Uh-oh. But then I'm like, uh, it's the same company because it's also from R and D. So mm-hmm. that's why the stripes were the same. And uh, all that. It's just, that makes it's, just sense, the, it's the same can design because it's from the same brewery. But I mean, yeah, now if they sense. do it now that they do UNC and C State ones, wouldn't be upset about that. So I mean, <laughs> I mean, I still have the box. So Tara's gonna act because I still have the box that it came in because it's why not? Right? Yeah. 
So Tara's like, if you if you let if you want me to, I'll cut it up, put it in a frame with like the actual front of it and frame it up. I'm She's like so nice. Aww. Yeah. Yeah. I even still have the can too, because come on, that can is so clean. Mm-hmm. It's so oh, nice. it's great. Get it's a little a collect- puck, get a little puck to hang on the wall to put it on. Oh yeah. <laughs> like a little yeah, puck yeah, shelf. Yeah, you just get a little puck shelf, put the can on top. Yeah. Yes. If people if people are gonna be like, that's weird. Why are you saving a can? Hey, it's a collector's can. Mm-hmm. <laughs> And you keep Leave it. Leave me alone. Yeah. <laughs> let, let me collect my things in peace, please. Plus, I live in South Carolina. We're not that. We don't get nice things. <laughs> we don't I, get nice things. <laughs> I'm not going to disagree with you. <laughs> I, I, mean, I I grew up calling South Carolina the ugly little sister. So that's, yeah. I mean, it's nice for the most part. But I mean. Nothing quite like North Carolina. No. No. But, well, Raleigh. Raleigh, anyway, and the yeah. beach, but <laughs> hey, hey, hey. honestly, though, Boone, Asheville, Boone's the pretty, outer, yeah, uh, the Outer Banks, Outer Banks are nice. I, we got I, the best of, best of both worlds. It's great. I do have to say though, the pulled pork nachos that I had on uh, on the Outer Banks, so oh, good, yeah. Oh, yeah. so good. Pulled uh, pork anything in North Carolina is just wow. Yeah, uh, I think there. I think because think so because I have a friend of mine that lives down here. He they still go up to Boone and all that. They still have they used to have a Wizard of Oz festival on I forget what mountain it is up in Boone. They're still doing it. And really? I remember go, yeah, I remember going as a kid when we were still living there because my mom's my mom's a massive Wizard of Oz fan, so we'd go like every year. Yeah, to Boone and up to the mountain. They're still doing it. I'm like, that's nuts. Yeah, it's supposed to be really nice. It was nice when I went. I don't know how it is now, but I mean, yeah. still. But Boone, Asheville, the Biltmore out there. Snow. Oh, Biltmore is beautiful. Yeah. Just Asheville in the snow, Boone in the snow. So great. Plus, I mean, first time I ever went to the mountains was actually to play a soccer tournament when I oh, was nice. in high school. And I just remember being up there and the air was so much cleaner. Yeah. Um, it, Like the environment and just the, it, I, I don't know, maybe that's just being in the Boone area and it being like hippie central or what it yeah. is because <laughs> my, my friend goes to App State. Um, have you and, have you seen have you seen the photos of their baseball stadium when it's fall time? Oh my! No, absolute. but it, or actually, yes, I have. Oh my gosh! It just yeah. fall in the mountains is just stunning here too. Yeah. It, like in the mountains yeah. in general, it, like it's yeah. it's beautiful. Honestly, though, at, like at, I think App State has probably the best. Like, there's a lot of baseball stadiums out there. I know we're not talking hockey real quick, but, <laughs> but App State's baseball stadium though, I love. I mean, I love NC mm-hmm. State's. It's really nice too. But Boone's though. Yeah, for the mountaineers, gosh, it's it's something about the mountains. It's dude. just all it is is just trees. Like your entire outfield is just trees behind mm-hmm. the behind the stadium. And the yeah. green colors too, like it's so nice. Like mm-hmm. like I said, NC State's got a nice one. I do think if UNC does have a nice baseball stadium, we'll give them some credit. Wow, NC- getting a compliment from an NC State fan, I'm shocked. <laughs> Not gonna happen a lot, but I will. I will. I'll take what I can get. Yeah, take, what you, take what you get, Tar Heels fans. It'd, it'd be happy with. We all know who's gonna run the ACC this year, so don't worry about it. See, and I'm not dumb enough to disagree with you. So. Devin Larry, baby, is all I have to say. But uh, yeah, I don't right. know. If you like, last thing I'll say, just kind of like about mountains and stuff. Once you yeah. finally get a chance to get out here to Colorado, try to time it so where you're out here right when it starts getting to fall, which is going to be actually around this month. Um, uh, I have. If you, yeah, if you go over, to over, Estes, over the... no, if you go to Estes Park, though, did okay. you, were you able to get to Estes Park when you were out here? Unfortunately. Well, Unfortunately, no, because I was over the road trekking at the time. So I got to okay. see it, but I didn't get to stay and enjoy Once it, you're so. able to get back out here and actually go and do things, whatever, yeah. get out to Estes Park, make a drive. The fall, yeah. or like the leaves changing colors in fall. Like yeah. it's so beautiful. Yeah, I think probably, I think Tara would probably agree. But if we're able to work it out to where like we're coming out to Colorado for a week, we're probably going to be staying in like colorado springs maybe yeah yeah so yeah, that's yeah, where it's yeah. going to be cheapest because estes park i mean they've got beautiful yeah. uh venues there um grant and uh, I, yeah yeah so yeah we're gonna try to find a hotel colorado springs and kick it with everyone in colorado for about a week so that's there we gonna go. be yeah that's gonna be absolutely wild though us mm-hmm. spencer joel spencer and needs them. to get down here joel yeah. actually has family down here in colorado Gosh. springs so it's it's while he lives up in denver it, it, like he makes this drive all the time so yeah 
I do want to go to Colorado Sky, uh, Colorado Spring Sky Sox games because I'd love the logo is so nice though. Mm-hmm. It, it's it's very clean. Yeah, it's just, no, it's, it's awesome. Minor league, it's minor league baseball, so why not? But all right, so <laughs> well, <I've laughs> sorry also, for that little tangent. <laughs> yeah, but I know the say that the beach is on the Outer Banks. They're so not. They're fun. They're they're mm-hmm. a good place to be. A lot of good putt putt courses out there too. Yeah, that that photo that the Canes posted with the storm brew with the tide rolling up, fantastic, was yeah. so good. beautiful. Yeah. I need. A, I kind of wish I had a storm brew, but you know what? <laughs> hey, we'll stick R- with what we got. <laughs> hey, R and D Brewing, if you're listening to this podcast, uh, we would love to be sponsored by you guys. Because I mean, or just send me some stuff. I would uh, greatly appreciate it. <laughs> or yeah, or if that, if that at least, it's at just least. something, something. <laughs> so sorry if my mic is like really bright to everyone on the on the YouTube on the YouTube version because the sun is directly hitting my mic. I was wondering <laughs> what that was. <laughs> Yeah, I got some special features now where it's like it's like Miles Jackson's glove where it just glows. It just glows all he, of a sudden. He's stealing my mic game, guys. <laughs> nah, yeah, free sun, free <laughs> the sun. sun game, golden it's hour, the free sun. <laughs> <laughs> and, yeah. <laughs> first episode back, million tangents. We're losing our minds today because why not? Why Great. not? All yeah. right, so before we go to the last segment of the show, we are going to have to throw it to our amazing sponsors of Primo X Hockey level up snacks and in the clutch apparel so we do come back we're talking about a little about jacob slavin because we have some thoughts about some top 20 rankings for defensemen that um we have some thoughts on but before we get into that let's talk let's throw it over to our amazing sponsors hey everyone we'll get back to the rest of the episode i just want to take a quick minute to talk about our amazing sponsors of the podcast primal x hockey level up snacks and in the clutch apparel First sponsor we have to talk about it has to be the original OG from the day one sponsor. That is Primo X Hockey. If you're looking for anything from stick tape to stick protectors, outdoor pucks, anything you can think of, they you name it, they have it from indoor to outdoor with amazing apparel as well. You gotta check out the guys from Primo X Hockey. Really great group over there. Been to the warehouse, really really nice. Cannot speak highly enough of these guys. The great thing too is they are Bates and Raleigh. So if you're in the Raleigh area looking to pick up from the actual warehouse, they can do that. If you're also looking to get your stuff shipped, they also do that as well for free shipping all across the United States. And the best part is, I got a discount code for you guys. So if you go to primalxhockey.com and use the code SEARCHCAP, in all caps, you get 20% off your order. Like I said, you cannot find a better group in terms of just having great hockey equipment. And even apparel, we got hats, we got koozies, we got t-shirts, hoodies, all that great stuff. So make sure to go to primaxhockey.com, use the code SIRSCAST to get 20% off your order. And like I said, you either need to pick up at the warehouse or you can get it shipped. That is how amazing these guys are and it's fast. So why not go check out Primax Hockey where, you know, you get all your great hockey equipment and you can support the podcast and support them because shop local, support local. Next sponsor I want to talk about is Level Up Snacks. If you're looking to take your gaming to the next level, make sure to check those guys out because they have really great, amazing, you know, drinks. They got watermelon. They got green apple. I I love a big watermelon guy, but I don't know that green apple tasted really good. It gives you a lot of good focus. Zero calories. Why why not enjoy some you know great hydration while you're playing those games to take your gaming to the next level with these guys at Level Up Snacks. And the good and the cool thing too is. They got snacks coming soon, and they got fast delivery. So why not join the Level Up fam? Go to levelupsnacks.com, and if you use the code SEARCHCAST, that's right, another SEARCHCAST code, you get 10% off your order. Just go to levelupsnacks.com, use the code SEARCHCAST, to get 10% off your order with some really great quality drinks and snacks coming soon as well. The last sponsor I want to talk about is In The Clutch. If you go to intheclutch.com where they have amazing MLBPA, MLSPA, NCAA, and vintage sports designs and all licensed products. Like I said, really great, amazing stuff. They even got hockey on there too. So if you're looking for, you know, a Cincinnati Sting or if you want to look for my duck, Cincinnati Mighty Duck t shirts, they even got the New England Whalers t shirts. Anything you think of for hockey, they got them over there. Plus, amazing on the sports as well. And the cool thing too is, we even got some merch over there as well within the clutch. If you go to their hockey section, look at the search cast. We got a t-shirt and we got a hoodie. And another great thing to us, we got another discount code in there as well. If you use the code 
opportunity. You get 10% off your order within the clutch. Really great group over there. I cannot highly recommend them. Their packs are amazing. Definitely check them out. So remember to go to intheclutch.com and use the code SEARCH to get 10% off your order. So big, massive props to Prime Wax Hockey, Level Up Snacks, and intheclutch.com for being able to help support the podcast. And like I said, if you guys use SearchCast at PrimeWaxHockey.com, you get 20% off. Use SearchCast at Level Up Snacks for 10% off. And if you use Surge at InTheClutch.com, that's another 10% off. So why not help support the podcast by also helping out the sponsors as well? Now, without further ado, let's send it back to the rest of the episode. And we are back. So, whoo. I had to take some deep breaths when I saw this. I did too. And um, oh, so sorry. We'll, there, we also do. Have, we also have our forgotten canes. I didn't want to forget. Mm-hmm. I did not want to forget to mention that we do have another forgotten canes because that's our, our new thing. People like to. People seem like they enjoy it, so mm-hmm. we are going to have that too. But uh, yeah. So the hurt. So Angel Network did their top twenty rankings, and they even said to at one point, "I hope the Hurricanes aren't mad at us." Mm-hmm. Which. For me, it's still a little bit disrespectful to uh, Jacob Slavin because, according to them, he is the 13th best defenseman in the game. Brent Burns is 20th, though, so we do have two canes on this list. Yes, which but, is wonderful. No, just it, like, do you want to go through the list in general just so people uh, kind of get a yeah, idea if, if they haven't seen it? Yeah, if you haven't seen it yet, it's been out for two days, but if you haven't seen it yet, so here's 1 through 20. So it's Kill McCarr, Victor Hedman, Roman Yossi, Adam Fox, Charlie McAvoy is your top five. Chris Letang, Aaron Eckblad, Devin Tays, John Carlson, and Miro Hiskinen. That's your top ten. Maurice Sider, Quinn Hughes, Jacob Slavin, Morgan Riley, Shea Theodore for 15. Zach Wierenski, Drew Doughty, Rasmus Dahlian, Alex Petrangelo, and Brent Burns finish out your top 20. Now, our friend of ours, JJ, he did mention this. Well, because I said something about Chris Letang. He's like, Chris Letang did win three cups. I'm like, are we talking about top 20 defensemen of all time? Or are we talking about 20 defensemen right now? Mm -hmm. Because I don't think Letang has been playing that good as of late to be six on this list Mm-mm. john carlson has not been playing that good to be ninth i think charlie mcavoy charlie mcavoy lower. needs to be lower yeah charlie mcavoy is five i i do because me and spencer did talk because someone did say charlie mcavoy is bad but me and spencer were like he's not that bad but i don't think he's that good for a top five he's not player. a top five defenseman but he's not like i would say five by any I, I would say he's top 10 yeah i was i like i would say definitely i would say he's more between the six and ten range Mm-hmm. Maybe like eight to ten, but not five. So for me, all in the Victor Hedman, I mean, it's yeah, sure. But Hedman, but McAvoy at five, Latang at six, Carlson at nine, already those three is an automatic like too high for me. I honestly, if I could, I'd maybe switch Carlson and Cider, in my yeah. opinion, because Cider needs to be higher than eleventh, in my opinion. I think yeah, I think Cider's good, but I don't think Cider is above jacob slavin good no and but, that's not what i'm saying by any means no 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 either, no, no i yeah. get that yeah no but for me but the thing is he's going into his second season you're telling me already after one season for this kid 11th already yeah, that's, yeah. that's for me is a bit of a stretch like, i like the kid he's good but 11th is a bit of a stretch for me for but a that one-year that- player that kind of goes back into what you were saying earlier, though, too. Is he a good defenseman now, or is he a great defenseman of all time? Because that that that's the big question here. Because if you're grading off of what's happened last season, just kind of building the list off of those top yeah. defensemen, well, I, I I could argue that he could be top ten. He could be, and I think a lot. And Cat point this out too. I think someone else did too. You're looking at points, mm-hmm. and for me, it's like. When you're talking about defensemen, you got to really points can't be the only conversation there. Exactly. Like, well, hopefully Jacob Slavin, like even the Hurricanes, the Hurricanes didn't like this spot. Mm-mm. No. 
and you, it, it's you cannot tell me that Jacob Slavin is behind Quinn Hughes, who had a very mediocre season in Vancouver, mm-hmm. and for the fact that Jacob Slavin in two seasons, two seasons had 12 penalty minutes. Mm-hmm. Guys get 12 penalty minutes in a week. Mm-hmm. He's done it in two seasons. And let's not forget, 10 of those were because his defensive partner was Tony D'Angelo. Mm-hmm. You take TA out of that equation, you're, you're probably dropping a you're good at least. You're, you're dropping six PIMs right off of that. Right. Mm-hmm. So you're talking maybe what? Six total in two Four years? six PIMs. Yeah, in two seasons. Yeah, I'm sorry. Lady, like he won the Lady Bing. Should have won it this past season, because I'm sorry, Kyle Connor should not have won it. You're telling me Jacob Slavin's 13th behind a, a now rookie, a, a guy who's going to his second season, a very, very mediocre Quinn Hughes, and you can't tell me John Carlson played that good last year, and McAvoy, and Latang. Yeah, that's that's Slavin's thirteenth. Like, come on. It's it, I, I like, said. I said top five. I could maybe see seventh at worst, maybe eighth. And but, it, this is it, this just goes to show how interesting this list is too. My boyfriend, who is an avid Abs fan, as you guys all know, even said Jacob Slavin belonged at nine. I, I could take nine. I will easily take. It's my lucky nine. number. I don't mind that at all. But honestly, Devin Tays. Jacob Slavin eight nine, I'm okay with that t- list. Yeah, or or even flip them for Slavin eight, Taze nine. Wouldn't be upset with that. No, not at all. Now but it's just come on, thirteenth. Total disrespect for. I even um, said yeah. I said total disrespect for Jacob Slavin. Easily top five. I will say seven to nine at worst. <laughs> Someone yeah. actually told me, and I kind of teased this at the beginning of the episode. Yeah. Someone told me to stick to soccer. <laughs> You're kidding. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, because I've been posting a little bit more recently because, you know, we're in the middle of dead season of hockey. Right. There's not a lot going on. I mean, well, sorry, I will rephrase. The women's worlds are going on, which has been fantastic, by the way. I've been NHL dead season and dead time. Yeah, yeah. Well, so we're talking NHL dead time. There's not a lot going on. Yeah. So, like, Luckily, soccer is started back up for the Premier League, mm-hmm. which I know your boyfriend isn't listening to, but Arsenal sucks. Uh, <laughs> but I've been posting a little bit more soccer because that's what we got going on right now. And, I've been, and someone's like, "Stick to soccer." I'm like, "Did you not? Did you not read my Twitter bio? I'm a department we- head of Belly Up Hockey, and I have two podcasts that involve hockey. Maybe take and a seat." Yeah, like, I think I know what I'm talking about. Yeah, maybe like, just a little bit. Yeah, I may not be. I, <sighs> I mean, my bias might show, and I might not be perfect with some of my all my takes. But I mean, doesn't mean you love the sport any less. Yeah. So it doesn't mean you don't know what you're talking about. So it, yeah, stick to soccer, bud. Like, I, don't okay. listen to people like that either. Just because, it, like, I mean, obviously, Guten guy's not reading your bio. So how uh, competent uh, uh, is he if he's really uh, sitting uh, there? I'm not taking it personally. I just laughed yeah. at it because I'm just like, what? I had to share it with you, and of course, everyone else is listening. Yeah, that's absurd. People, yeah, people who listen to the podcast are like, what? <laughs> Telling the department head of Belly Up Hockey. To stick to soccer, yeah. I mean, I I'm love still trying soccer. to wrap my head around that. That's yeah, yeah. I mean, I love. I mean, I grew up playing soccer until right, I hit same, high yeah. school. So I mean, I I, I could have played high school soccer, but I you saw can it. love other sports at the same time. Yeah, it's like, like it's not illegal to be a soccer fan as well as a hockey fan. Yeah, New it's flash. like it's like stick to soccer. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> I thought it was just hilarious. That's I'm like, bro. Yeah, but you know what? It is what it is. I just had to laugh at it because it's just, but, but also the rankings, though. I mean, the rest of the list isn't a lot of people were not happy with this list, though. I don't, no. there, there was a very, I don't think I'll, I saw very many people are like okay with this list. Yeah. I mean, and I'm, I'm kind of scrolling through the comments of it right now, too, and just kind of looking. I mean, a lot of the comments are regarding Slavin, but a lot of those comments are also coming from, 
Canes fans. There's a yeah. few sprinkled in here and there. And I mean, we we know a bunch of people who will sit there and be like, yeah, no, Jacob Slavin has got to this is di- a disrespectful list when yeah. it comes to him. But something else, it, like somebody brought up and I'm reading the comment now, Brent Burns sneaks up in top 20 when he leaves the Sharks. I think that's very <laughs> interesting too. I mean, yeah, he's still good. It's just the Sharks yeah. are a terrible team. So, yeah. I mean, Brent Burns never, he hasn't gotten bad. It's just Mm-mm. the team he's around sucked. Yeah. So, so it is what it is. So, I mean, I mean, Devin Tays, he deserves to be up there. I, I will give him credit to that because I know a lot of people are like, well, Devin Tays is better than Jacob Slavin. Mm-hmm. Let's, let, 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 let's, let's, I, let's, I, let's I can argue it. either way. I understand why people think he's better than Jacob Slavin, but at the same time, I'm just kind of like, uh, let's take, let's take know. a step back. Let's take a step back a little bit, a yeah. little bit with that. But I yep. mean, honestly, though, I would say, top, per hyperbole, I did say top five. Bias did come out a little bit. Plus, he's my favorite player. If I had to, you know, be, well, what's the word I'm looking for? Top 10, I'll be okay with. I'll be yeah. fine with the top 10. Mm hmm. Anything outside top ten, absolutely disrespectful. Yeah, disrespect. So, yeah, how yeah. dare you slander Jacob Slavin and not put him? In the- <laughs> and, and Angel Network's like, yeah. oh, the Hurricanes are mad at us. Uh, newsflash: Hurricanes are still mad at you. So, look at the comments. <laughs> the, yeah. Our Hurricanes literally was just like, yeah. Man's called the brick wall for a reason. Like, come on. <laughs> yeah, have you seen him in a brick wall in the same room at the same time? I mean, not I. <laughs> Corbin, once you look at both of these photos and spot the difference, yep. there is no difference. Like none. I don't uh, know. I just and, and it like and like I said, we brought it up too. This is probably it, like you're not taking into account like takeaways, uh, steal. Like I, I don't know. Like blocks, I feel like the, steals, yeah, yeah, exactly. It, yeah. So you're not you're not breakups. Yeah, it's just you're not. Ta- I feel like this list doesn't take a lot of that into account. Like this looks like a very points based list to me. Oh no! You're telling me that they're based on the defenseman on points more than their actual play. Oh, I'm so shocked. Yeah. Who could have saw this coming? Yeah. So I, I don't know. I, I, well, I also welcome, welcome, welcome to the Norris tier list, everybody. What are we? <laughs> Yeah, yeah, for real, though. honestly. I don't know, no, but honest, I'm so I'm so tired of slaving again. Disrespect. We know he's good. I feel like. That's all that matters to us. We yeah. we know we can recognize, we can appreciate the gem that we have in Jacob Slavin. I'm so but... glad he's a hurricane. I'm so glad he's a hurricane. Yeah. No, like, the, like I, the like check I a... that Don yeah. Waddell is going to have to cash out when we have to re-sign him. Oh, gosh. <laughs> 9.5, baby. <laughs> hey, give him, the, give him the actual Seth Jones contract to a guy who actually can play defense. Right. Yeah. For yeah, real. So I don't I mean, know. But the, the second C stands for here's the cash. <laughs> All the money. <laughs> Back up the brain shark for Jacob Slave, and he's getting the bag. Literally. Yeah. Yeah. I don't All know. All the money. But... All right. So before we go, it's not our super usual hour and a half plus hour show. So we are going to our last part of the show. We are going to do our forgotten canes. And uh, I got to like kind of re re get used to doing this because it's been a week i gotta like <laughs> gotta figure out what i'm doing here yeah. uh take it away no. sir so my forgotten hurricane where he actually wore two numbers with this team he wore 45 from 1999 to 2008 and he also wore 21 back in 2002 2003 spent six years with the hurricanes he actually was drafted by the team First round, 16th overall in the 1999 amateur draft from White Bear Lake, Minnesota. I am talking about the one and only David Tanabe. Oh, okay. Yes. First season as a hurricane as a 19 year old in 99, 2031 games played. Only got four points, but I think his. His best season, if I'm looking at yeah, the points wise, was 2000 and 2001 as a 20 year old, 74 games, 29 points, but he did get 42 pims. So I mean, you know, but physical se- guy, yeah, 17, mi- yeah, 17 uh, minutes and 55 seconds of uh, average ice time, but his most that he had with the Hurricanes, 18 27 
back in when he was a 21 year old in 01, the 01 02 season. Um, okay. but so, so his six years with the Hurricanes, 329 games played, 21 goals, 61 assists for 82 points. Did finish with a minus 46, 167 pims, and he averaged 17 minutes and 17 seconds. But yeah, hmm. my forgotten Kane, David Tanabi from the 1999 draft as a 19 year old. Okay. Six years with the Canes. So huh. that's my forgotten Canes of this episode. All righty. Well, I mean, I will say I've heard the name. Right. I don't know too, too much about him. So I, that'll have to be something I go back and look at. Oh yeah, for sure. Yeah. I would say definitely look at the, oh, with the oh one oh two season. Cause that's when they, you know, went to the final for the first time. So yeah. Yeah. Not, not a, not a bad choice, but yeah, no, honestly, I love the forgotten Kane's episode. Just like mm-hmm. going back through old, going back to the old players. So, oh yeah. It's so, so great. great. All right. So Bailey, who is your forgotten Kane of the episode? So like I, and I feel like I've mentioned this before, it's nice that we kind of have like a little bit of a mixed bag in terms of how long we've been watching, because I feel like a lot of your takes can cater to a lot of the people who were around and can like be like, oh, I remember him being on the team versus me. And I tend to interact, uh, a lot of my interaction falls with a lot of the younger Kane's audience, like Kane's fan audience. Um, yeah, even though so, we have like a, even though we have like a ten year age difference, it's right? Like I not, know. It's like, and so that's where a lot of kind of my forgotten Kane's thoughts are coming from. And honestly, right. like a lot of these times, I sometimes forget that these guys even played for us. Yeah. Um. So my pick spent uh three seasons with the Canes, uh, okay. twenty thirteen to twenty sixteen. Um, he was traded during that 2015, 16 or yeah, no, was he? Oh, maybe he skipped a season two. I don't know. So he, uh, played for us the 2013 through 2016, uh, first season with us, 16 goals, 15 assists. Um, he was the, uh, overall 142nd draft pick in 2005. By the the Canes, I'm guessing? By Buffalo. No, by Buffalo. Um, and that's who he started out his career with. And you, okay. some of the older Canes fans who can kind of remember that period of time may recognize this player from his through the leg shot that he scored on. Oh, yep. Hailing at a yeah. total of how, yeah, I'm trying to figure out. I don't remember how tall he was, but he was one of the shortest guy that we had had in a long time, if not ever. I don't, I know who you're talking about. Yes. Hailing from Oxford. uh, What was that? Why am I blanking? Am I? That's Michigan. Michigan. I thought so. Okay. Why would Yeah. My brain is not on it today. Nathan Gerby is my pick. I (laughs) Gerbs, baby. Wow, man. Yeah. Gerby, I, and that is the one, it, like, not only remembering how short the man was, I need to, I, I don't know why NHL, oh, 5'4". He is an inch shorter than I am, <laughs> Fast which tells happy. you anything. I am 5'5". He, five, had, five. Some, he had some speed. He had some speed. Dude was quick. Yeah. Dude was so fast for being a uh, center. Like, and it, like, that's when you think of centers and guys who play forward, you think of kind of bigger builds. You think of guys who are maybe teetering or on the kind of bigger end of five foot, like kind of gearing towards six foot and something like that. And guys who are heavier and who can play that center position the way that it needs to be played. And Gerby, I feel like absolutely played his position to a T being as disadvantaged as he was. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> also, Columbus Blue Jackets legend. Nathan yes, Kirby. he's been with, he's been with them in the color the, the Cleveland Monsters for like forever. But yeah, yeah. I, I forget. Yeah, Nathan the Kirby. first season he was with us played eighty one games. Second season was seventy eight, and the third season was forty seven. In that first season, he had like I said, sixteen goals, fifteen assists. That second season was ten goals, eighteen assists. Um, yeah. His plus minus was not the best, though it hasn't really been great after the first three yeah. seasons he ever played. Yeah, Ger- I think Gerbs was kind of ahead of his time in terms of 
where the league is now, yeah, especially with shorter players. So, mm-hmm. like he did, like he, like him and Kaner have been kind of Kaner is a little Patrick Kane is a little bit taller I, than yeah. him. Mm-hmm. I want to say of, he's five eleven, isn't he? Yeah. So they still say that he was short. Yeah. Nathan Gerby at five four, I think, was a little bit tougher for him. I mean, mm-hmm. he did, he did, he does have a solid career though. You know, yeah. being five four, he he's played really well. Good in the minor leagues too. So yeah. I mean. Honestly, fantastic pick for <laughs> uh, you know this week's Forgotten Kane. So, yeah. but um, I'm glad everyone's enjoying the you know the new segment. A lot of people don't seem like they like you know kind of trips down memory lane of like former Canes that used to be here. You're like, oh yeah, he was a Hurricane at one point. Mm-hmm. So I mean, yeah, but I, I love this segment. It really helps with refreshing my memory as well as getting <laughs> familiar with the older Canes that I didn't watch and right. wasn't old enough to get into yeah for sure i know last week's were really interesting so mm-hmm. if you haven't yet yeah. go check them out because they're awesome yeah they're very awesome I, so i'm glad the, like, we did like two in the first episode i'm glad like my first one was like joseph war check such, mm-hmm. such a good pick but such I mean, a fantastic pick i mean honestly your picks have been pretty good too so i mean honestly yeah. though it's we, but like I said, I you can somewhere. really tell like the watch difference between the two of us. <laughs> given bit, who yeah. We pick. yeah. Yeah. It's, it's definitely gonna be interesting. We get the true. Plus also you're like, all right, I can't, it's like, you can't do Glenn Wesley. You can't do Ray Whitney. You can't do Justin Williams. Cause it's like, they're not forgotten canes. Like yeah. I can't do them. anyone from that 06 team. And I like, I, I mean, I maybe could get away with someone, but you, you it, could. I mean, you were five at the time, so I mean, you yeah. could. But it's like, it, yeah, it's not set. so much forgotten canes for you guys as it mu- as it is for like people in my generation. Yeah, and then try to be like, oh, do you know this guy from this team? And everyone's like, yeah, we all remember that guy from that team. <laughs> it's 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 really tough when you're trying to talk about a Stanley Cup winning team. Mm-hmm. Who do you not remember from that team? Yeah, I mean, you you know, Mike Commodore, you had Ray Whitney, you had Doug Wade, mm-hmm. you know, Vosacek, you know, Wes. It's you know, so some people, many some, people, some people still some people still forget about Martin Gerber. Mm-hmm. Martin Gerber got us to the playoffs. Yes, it was just did. Cam Ward who won us the cup, though, because Cam Ward won God mode. Yep. And it was like <laughs> I'm gonna just gonna save all the pucks and win us games <laughs> because why not? And yeah. set the rookie record for wins in a playoff. So I mean. Hey, he did want to come. Why do I idolize him? I wonder. Yeah, I, I wonder why he was one of the few goalies to get a Conn Smythe trophy. I wonder why I have his picture on my wall. Hmm. Or your or your profile picture on Twitter. Or my profile picture. It's it's a mystery. Yeah. <laughs> phone, phone background at some point too, just because. Because <laughs> why not? Yeah. Honestly, but all right. But this will wrap up the show. But before we officially officially go bailey where can people find you on the socials you can find me on twitter at bailey curtis and that is bailey with two y's um mainly just a lot of hockey content but i love chatting up a storm hockey life anything mention me shoot me a dm love getting to know you guys um if you want a kind of more personal aspect and personal look into my life you can go follow me over on instagram at bailey lynn curtis um, go follow the podcast, obviously at the surge cast on Twitter. There's a link tree in the bio and you can find everything you could need regarding the podcast there. Go give us a five-star review on Apple podcasts. Do it. You won't regret it. Um, and then if you're looking for just all around hockey content, definitely go follow belly up hockey over on Twitter as well. Yeah, for sure. And plus going back to the Apple podcast, <laughs> raise five stars, leave a review. We'll shout it on the podcast. And uh, oh, and by the way, when this episode does drop, which will be after it closes, guys, remember our giveaway does end technically today since you're listening now. When it drops, actually, you know what me and Bill are gonna do one better for you guys. We're actually gonna drop this episode at 11 o'clock Eastern, so that way you have about an hour to go and uh, you know, get yourself entered for our giveaway for our free Hurricanes hat. So you know what? Just for you guys, we're gonna drop this episode a little early, so you make sure that you can uh, go enter because noon Eastern on the first, you gotta make sure to get that done so that way you can go enter yourself the one that Hurricanes hat. Because who doesn't want free stuff? So I know I do. I I, mean, I, I I hate that I didn't get you to get me one of those hats too when you were ordering them. So 
I mean, uh, I'll have to go and get one myself. It's fine. They're not that expensive, though, <laughs> no. you know. You know? No. <laughs> not that I wear baseball hats much anyway, but. Yeah. Ex- <laughs> anyway. Yeah. No. <laughs> Anyhow. Um, but yeah, so you can find me at One True Zach on Twitter. That's Owen E. True Zach. Um, I'm kind of on Instagram, but kind of also not really. Who knows? I don't know. It is what it is. But <laughs> mainly on Twitter. Uh, I do talk hockey. So for those who are wondering i do i do watch hockey i do know what i'm talking about when it comes to hockey so it's okay it's not just soccer hockey is also there so if you know you know if you've listened if you got to this point you kind of get what we're talking about um but yeah like bailey said go check out the search cast you know go check out our youtube make sure to subscribe hit the bell turn notifications on so you never miss our beautiful faces talking about the most beautiful team in hockey which is the carolina hurricanes but until next time for episode 10. 10, I say. Of season Double two. digits. Double digits again for the second time. <laughs> for episode 10 of season 2. I'm Zach. I'm Bailey. And we'll see you next time here at the Search Cast. Listening to this Belly Up Media production. Some said we'd go belly up, so we made it our name. And we're still here.